Yep, that was him. Okay, so this, so the feud you were calling about Randy Orton, um, DDT. Between and Randy Orton and the U.S. Marine Corps. What's that? Between him and the United States Marine Corps. Yes. No. Between uh, Triple H and Randy Orton, uh, he DDT'd uh, Stephanie McMahon while oh, Triple while H Triple was, H was like like handcuffed to the turnbuckle and forced to watch or something. Yes. That that. <laughs> That that that's a heel maneuver there. Oh yeah, that's, it's funny. That's a fucking heel. That's yeah, as like, I said, that's like attacking. borderline. That's like almost big boss man stealing your wife's corpse at the funeral level heel. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> was was that the same period where like Randy Orton was going on like that like bizarre rampage and he RKO'd. Uh, Stacy Keebler. The girl with the le- yeah, Stacy Keebler. Yeah, I think it might have been. Is that that same era? I think so. Um, I'm trying to remember if this is before or after they've brought in the HD Tron. Because when Randy Orton uh, RKO'd Stacey Keebler, it was before. Okay. Now, I know why he he did did that to McMahon. Why did he do that to Keebler? Um, I can't remember. I think maybe to... all the women he's RKO just kind of blur together after a while. <laughs> I think he might have done that to like stick it to Vince because I know Stacy Keebler originally was introduced as like Vince's secretary who became a diva really? wrestler. Okay. Oh. And you can really tell the poly count difference between the crowd and the wrestlers when you get an up close <laughs> look at them. Oh, like, I'm said I'm sorry I missed this, but back during WrestleMania 24, apparently there was a pyrotechnics mishap during the Undertaker's victory celebration that in, for, injured 45 people in the crowd. Wow. Some of them hospitalized. Jeez. I know that, like, they have to get a lot of permits to keep using pyro indoors. Oh, I'd imagine. There's the pose. The pose that has become a famous gif on the internet (laughs) used to signify the end of an argument. (laughs) The Randy Orton quote-unquote legend killer pose. So were you familiar with Randy Orton during that gimmick era? Yeah. When he was the legend killer, he would just go around attacking old legends. Right, yeah. Sure. I love, like, I love the way that That was before he graduated, that that graduated to just attacking random women. Yes. <laughs> he was honing his skills. He evolved from attacking women to attacking old people. <laughs> Well, he had to keep busy. So, he had to keep busy after you know he left the core. Yeah. It is funny that like I would have thought Randy Orton would have immediately gone into wrestling, considering he is a third generation superstar. Right. But I guess he uh, went to serve his country and decided that taking orders was not for him. Or showing up for work, apparently. <laughs> I, like, I would love for that to have just been what made him got gotten a bad conduct discharge. Just imagining Randy Orton sleeping in his military bunk. <laughs> no, I don't want to get up. Battery RKO'd his CO. <laughs> that would have gotten him a dishonorable discharge, and, 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 I think. Yeah, that, yeah, that would have bumped you up, probably. And then he, and then he, does, then he does the legend killer pose. <laughs> oh, you know what? Or be, you know, be, before he started attacking legendary wrestlers, he started just like attacking like legendary military personnel, famous you know, non-military personnel. Is Patton still alive? He's been dead for like half a century, <laughs> Nick. No, Patton is not still alive. <laughs> she was, she... I will never pretend to be a uh, military aficionado. I'm, I'm sad to report that Ulysses S. Grant is no longer with us either. Damn, Stonewall Jackson? No. Damn. He didn't even survive the Civil War, Nick. <laughs> Robert E. Lee. 
I, I've got more bad news for you, I'm afraid. Oh, bad news, Markley. You should right. say it. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's um, a current wrestler. His name is Wade Barrett, but uh, he was introduced. He was introduced. Uh, he was oh, uh, NXT season one. Oh, okay. I think he was the winner, actually. Well, this was back when it was more like a reality program. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that they at the end of season one they ended up giving none of the wrestlers a contract. <laughs> really? Yeah. Which led to the formation of the Nexus, which was which is, uh, all the season one competitors who felt that they were slighted because they were not even considered. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, uh, I think two, no, three, uh, four? There was like ten Nexus members, and I think less than half of them ended up actually going anywhere in the WWE. Um, but the original leader of the Nexus, Wade Barrett, uh, underwent a character change recently. He was, I mean, he's always been a heel, but he's now Bad News Barrett, okay. and he just comes out, and he's British, and he just screams, like, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. And then he says something, like... Then he just starts you know, talking about, like, recent stocks. That vaguely gone down. bad news. Well, like, he talked about stocks once. Really? And how everybody's money was, was like, worthless. <laughs> uh, he's very satirical and pretty open about his, uh, you know, in in his comedy. I have to get another pedigree. Uh, talking about uh, local sports teams, which is, you know, obviously a, a favorite. Awesome. Um but recently he's gotten back into wrestling. He's never been, honestly, never been better. Uh, and uh, but I just love him because he's British and he he's like a giant ham and it's hilarious. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. The fact that he's got a I British don't... accent kind of makes it sound makes it better somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't understand. I've got uh, some bad that, news. Uh, Professional wrestling is predetermined. The crowd just goes nuts. The person you want to see is not going to win. <laughs> Actually, he did that at the Royal Rumble. He uh, was like the sideshow. Mm -hmm. And he was on this um, podium, this rising podium. And like, he ca it, whenever it was, his theme song would play and then the podium would slowly rise and he'd bang on the gavel. Mm -hmm. But the podium was having problems, yeah. and so like, like it would rise and then fall, and then eventually it would just not rise. <laughs> and so he was on the ground with a little uh, podium thing <laughs> in front of him and a gavel, and like he was supposed to raise so everybody could see him, but like nobody could see him. And he he managed to turn that heat uh, around. He was uh, he insulted local electricians saying that they were the most, in, <laughs> the most incompetent. Thinking on his feet. Yeah. Uh, he acknowledged real life uh, fan upset like that the person that they likely wanted to see uh, win the Royal Rumble, CM Punk, was not going to win. Now what are your objectives here? Uh, I hit, did the first one. It was just uh, hit a spine buster, and then I had to do two pedigrees, and now I have a hidden objective. Oh, it's to pin Randy Orton after the pedigree and win within 10 seconds. Oh, yay. Triple H versus Randy Orton. Well, that was pretty quick. Yep. Triple H versus Randy Orton is a feud that's visited a lot, so, you know. I imagine that at the actual event, this was probably a mid-card match, even though this is for the WWE title. And the main event would have been more likely the triple threat. Ed, Sean, Cena. If Wikipedia is to believe, no, this was the main event. Oh, wow. 
immediately preceded by the triple threat. Preceded by. Okay. I can see that. 